So why should you read The Girl Downstairs? That's simple. If you're a romance and drama fan, then this webtoon is fit for purpose. Webtoons and romance go together like PB and J, but this one isn't like all the others. This series has very well done writing and it isn't about who's the best girl and who will win. It's actually about uncovering the stories and people behind their facades. Welcome to Bento. Let's talk about the girl downstairs. This story mainly follows June and Donna Lee. June is your typical student always getting drunk and partying now that he has a little bit of freedom. Donna Lee is a former idol who quit on bad terms and is now somewhat aimless in life. When you have a story like this, you need to have two characters you want to see get together, and these two fit perfectly. But Songa Min, the writer of this series, does a good job at grounding the characters and gives them real stakes and real stories. It's pretty hard to get the reader to sympathize with a rich former idol that much. You can't tackle a character in the same way as you would a plain Jane. So instead, Songa focuses on the hardships of her job and the stress and pain that comes with her past actions after leaving it. Because the reality is we all at some point have had awful jobs we didn't like or have traumatic experiences and it's relatively that same approach. The best aspect of the story is uncovering who Dunna is. It's almost like a mystery that's unraveling. Behind Dunna's cool exterior and ceaseless beauty is something more complicated, a tangle web of experiences, trauma, and stories that are endlessly fascinating and captivating. Whenever we have a development for Dunna, I am always reading intently and closely, being sure not to miss any bit of detail. Her interactions with characters are another strong suit with Dunna. She always seems like someone who's walled off into her own world, and certainly, on the outside, she is in a league of her own. So Dunna has many different modes of interactions. There is the kind with June, which is very close, extremely intimate, and romantic, but then you have her interactions with Margot, and it's like Margot has this genuine respect and care for her as a good friend, maybe even a sister. Plus, you have all of the other randoms who know her as the idol Dunna, which actually doesn't happen as often as you'd think. You mean you'd think an idol like her would be known all around Korea, but in reality, that's not really focused on too much. This in turn helps the world feel more grounded around her. June is another favorite of mine. He's your typical new adult who parties and gets drunk when he probably should be studying. Along with Ira, he is one of the most innocent characters in this webtoon. Because of this, he's quick to get wrapped up in anything Dunna does or suggests. But oddly enough, I like this about June, as Dunna never does anything malicious or toxic to June, but instead, it's more innocent. This is what makes June charming his youth and inexperience, but as well his desire to be there for Donna while also dealing with his feelings for his high school crush Margot. Love triangles are hell. So if I were June, I'd probably be running to the mountains. I'd get a goat and live in a log cabin as I slowly become a hardened lumberjack mountain man. But hey, it is what it is. And if June really has to choose between three ladies like Donna, Margot, and Ira, well to put simply, the pretty ladies that have good personalities. So what's the worst that could happen? Speaking of Margot, she may be June's crush, but those feelings weren't exactly unrequited, except due to certain situations, really wasn't able to act on those feelings. I'll let you find out why. Otherwise, Margot is quite underrated. While June and Dunna often steal the spotlight, her involvement in this story throws so much needed spice into the mix. Her character is well written, and I feel a lot of sympathy for her and what she's going through. If June is the innocent one with too much freedom, Margot is the lost one who doesn't know everything about herself just yet. She's dealing with so many other issues in her life. She's trying to juggle school, family, and figuring out who she is and the possibility of losing the opportunity that she had with June. I'd say there is a bright future for Margot, but in the short term, she'll have to go through a lot to get to where she wants to be. Then there is Ira, and if Margot is spice, she's a wrench. And probably a kitchen sink too. Ira has boy troubles. She's a hapless romantic who falls in love with a man if he says something nice like, your hair looks good today. She's a lot like June in that regard and even seems to be on the verge of becoming an alcoholic much like June as well. This girl can down a gasoline if she tried, I'm not kidding. But she's probably the sweetest of all the characters. You just can't help but like this girl's attitude and you want to tell her to chin up and don't think about the romance so much. I do feel her 
involvement in this series so far is quite underwhelming though. Having to juggle Margot, Dunna, and June is a perfect balance, but Ira is the third wheel in every sense of the word. I like Ira a lot, but the outcome seems very obvious to me. She'll get turned down after her big moment of development and she'll probably be alright. Now, I don't think this is an issue, but I do wish she was in it a tad bit more is what I'm trying to say. If so far you're on the fence and that didn't tempt you, what about the art you've been looking at while watching this video? The art of Songa Min doesn't miss. Her art is some of the most beautiful I've seen for a webtoon. If you're not captivated by the beauty of Dunna, Margo, Ira, or June, or their writing even, then yeah, this webtoon is probably not for you. But much like Songa's previous work, her art is nothing short but a 10 out of 10 banger with art alone, and that is enough to recommend in my opinion. But besides that, if you're a fan of romance, drama, or simply like character development in the purest sense, then The Girl Downstairs is a webtoon for you. This series successfully avoids many pitfalls, though does have a cheesy webtoons reference that I hate every time I see it, feel like I can do a video on that alone, but besides minor complaints like that or Ira being the third wheel, this is an easy recommendation. If you haven't already, I've previously made a video on The Girl Downstairs when it first came out, and as well many other webtoons already. If you have any suggestions for series, topics, or videos, then please leave them down below. Next week, we're going to be taking a look at Unordinary's climactic ending. And if you made it to the end of the video, use the cookie emoji in your comment. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.